What makes up the perfect Warframe? Is it its position in the meta? Its modding capabilities? Its fashion frame potential? Is it the gameplay experience and playstyle it offers? Is it something that you struggle to put your finger on? It's likely that it's a combination of all of the above. Tony Mo here, folks, and today we're going to be talking about the perfect Warframe. So let's start by addressing the title of this video, The Perfect Warframe. It's a bit of a misnomer. I can't personally sit here and make a video, regardless of how much playtime or experience I have with Warframe, that clearly identifies the perfect Warframe, at least in a universal sense that would be applicable for everyone who then tries to play said Warframe. The reality is everyone values different things in their gameplay experiences. We all have different ideas of what's fun. My idea of the perfect Warframe is not going to be the same as your idea of the perfect Warframe, and that's at the heart of today's discussion. As someone with about 300 hours in Warframe, I like to make videos that help new players wrap their heads around concepts that I think are vital to enjoying the Warframe experience. At the same time, these videos usually provide veterans with a place to discuss their experiences over their last several, potentially thousands of hours. So. Let's go ahead and do that. I think it's important uh, that we talk a little bit about Warframe as a game and the community and the ways in which they acknowledge and encourage this sort of choose your own adventure style experience to Warframe. The idea that, yeah, you can sit here and you can look at the numbers and we can run through the meta and the tier list, but really we all just want you to play the frame that you find the most fun. We want you to do your own thing and not rely 100% on what I might say or what anyone else says when it comes to how you go about playing and enjoying Warframe. Now the community, like I said, they exist, the, they, ex they acknowledge the existence of the meta. They totally understand, right? This is a game made up of numbers. At the end of the day, there's things to be said about how certain Warframes perform uh, and whether or not they're underperforming or even overperforming. It's not to say that those discussions shouldn't be had, but it is to be said that they shouldn't be the only metric that you use when you decide which Warframes you're going to try and play. Again, community is fantastic about this. And then we have DE and the way in which they've designed Warframe itself. This is a game that is super free form in its progression systems. You can swap mods at literally any time. You just plug and play with them. One mod can be applied across multiple frames and multiple weapons. You don't need to have duplicates. You don't need to dump resources into duplicate mods to push them further. You can truly experiment to your heart's content and never be punished for wanting to see how something might work. Just hop on into Hydrant, throw a mod on your Archiplasmor, shoot it at something. Did it do the thing you thought it would do? Not really, okay, go back out, pull that mod out, swap a new mod in, rinse and repeat. There is no like super deep, dedicated, punishing progression system in Warframe. You don't have to spend 30 hours putting stats into a skill tree only to find out at the end of it that the entire build is kind of rubbish and it's super weak in the end game. You can just mod on the fly and make changes. So if something doesn't work, when you do hit those level 100 enemies while it was working at the level 50 enemies, you just you just put a new mod in. You spend some resources, you form it, you get a more expensive mod in there, right? It's just, it's so nice to not feel like you've got to go down this path of long-term commitment that could very much result in you being punished. Now, there's not necessarily anything wrong with games that deliver that sort of experience, but I think for new players especially, when you're already trying to wrap your head around so much, it's nice to know that you're eventually going to hit a point where you can just stop following everyone else's builds and very freely start to mess with those builds and turn them into your own. Now, when I started making this video, I was very much encouraged by my time with Protea. Protea has become one of my favorite Warframes, hands down a Warframe that I would call my own personal perfect Warframe. It checks all of my boxes. It provides me with an experience where I can do all the things I love to do in Warframe. And so I started thinking about the ways in which the people around me that I play the game with and people in the community who make reviews for these, for these, for these frames and just in general, the way people talk 
about the frames they enjoy playing? What are the things they focus on? What are the concepts? What are their, you know, sort of own personal boxes that need to be checked for them to say, this frame is a lot of fun for me. And then I kind of made a list of those things. I, I broke it up into three categories that I felt were the most commonly mentioned and the most easy to actually identify. So let's run through those. First and foremost is power potential. The idea that you want to do something and you want to do it at the top of your class. This might mean looking at builds or Warframes that are uh, more up in the meta or higher at the top of the tier list currently, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're just looking to do damage. Again, you want to do something and you want to do it at the top of your class, that could be support, that could be healing, that could be damage, any one of those things. You just want to be an individual in your group and in your squad when you're out doing runs where everybody turns and says, damn, that dude was laying down the heals. Damn, that chick was putting out the damage. Damn, that person really helped us win this one. Again, you just want to be at the top. You want to be exceptional regardless of what you decide to do. Next up is fashion frame. Uh, fashion framing, right? Looks matter style over substance, or at least style alongside of substance. Role playing, I think, also takes a big part in the idea of fashion frame. Really trying to find a frame or, uh, you know, modify a frame to create something that you find so unbelievably aesthetically pleasing that you just go to the relay and you just kind of flex and you say to yourself, yeah, everyone is totally looking at me. Now, keep in mind, I'm not saying that as a player, you're going to pick one of these things and it's the only deciding factor for whether or not you enjoy a Warframe. But I do think people have priorities and some people prioritize certain parts of a Warframe's offering over other parts of the Warframe's offering when they do make that decision as to whether or not a Warframe is for them. I would say at the end of the day that fashion framing is very rarely the number one thing for people, but I imagine it is definitely at the top of the list of what is a combination of multiple things that make up their fun factor for that frame. Moving on to the last and definitely not the least thing is the overall gameplay experience. I would say that this is probably the number one thing for most people. Uh, I know it is for me. It doesn't really matter what the power potential of a frame is. If I don't enjoy the gameplay experience, I'm probably going to move on to a different frame. Gameplay experience, in my eyes, makes up the ability and the mechanics that the frame offers and how satisfying they are to use. Now, this could be the numbers that they output, whether it's healing, support, or damage, but I think it's also, very importantly, the animations and the audiovisual design for those abilities. They need to have a wow factor. This is a thing that I struggle with personally when going back to playing some of the older Warframes, especially ones that haven't been reworked. They don't really have that wow factor, and so I might press my three or my four, and I see a bunch of damage numbers on my screen, but the visual effects and the audio design isn't really up to par with that, and therefore I don't actually really feel like I'm doing as much as the game is telling me I'm doing. This is actually a really interesting psychological part of game design that I've seen a lot of game developers talk about. In fact, way back in the days of Wolfenstein enemy territory, Splash Damage had an issue with their MP40 and their Thompson submachine gun. They were actually identical in terms of statistical values. They had the exact same damage output, same fire rate, etc, etc. However, they did have different bits of audio design, and so players kept telling Splash Damage that the Thompson was more powerful. And so they looked at things and they decided that if they tweaked the audio and made the Thompson maybe a little less oomphy, or made the MP40 a little bit more oomphy, they might be able to balance those things out. And it kind of worked, but at the end of the day, the psychological precedent had already been set. And for whatever reason, players were just convinced the uh, Thompson was more powerful. It was the better gun. It had to be. It had to do more damage than the MP40. It's a really interesting thing, and I think it applies massively here in Warframe. I want a frame that has that wow factor. I wanna pop my four and just be like, holy crap, look at all of that goodness. You know, you want the appearance of damage to match the actual statistical value of the said damage or the support or the healing or whatever it might be. So why don't we talk a little bit about my perfect Warframe? Because then at the end of this video, I'm gonna ask you about your perfect Warframe. As I stated earlier, 
Protea was the catalyst for this video. Protea checks all of my boxes. She's got an active play style. I'm rewarded for moving around the map, throwing out tons and tons of my grenades so they can do slash damage procs to all of the enemies. I'm also constantly throwing down my satellite shields to make sure that my team has them nice, juicy overshields. And if I'm running with my buddy Derek and he's playing as Haro, I'm giving him this huge overshield pool which he can pull from to do more awesome Haro things. She's also got some support mechanics. Again, those shields, those are the support mechanics. I like playing support frames, but I don't necessarily want a frame that is only support. I want a little bit of damage, and that brings us to the next thing on Protea's list, which is burst damage. Her turrets have some serious burst damage potential. Popping those things out when huge hordes of mobs show up and just watching that combo go up and up and up and up. Not to mention the audio and visual design behind the turrets themselves, that sort of whoop, 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 as they just lay waste to everything. It's so, so good. She's also pretty high on my list for roleplay potential, at least with my current arsenal. As someone who only has 300-ish hours, I don't have a lot of mods, so it's difficult for me to put together a lot of different weapon builds. I'm, I'm frequently finding a weapon I like and then going out and hunting down those mods. So right now I'm running the Arc of Plasma, which actually has a pretty good build on it. I've uh, hunted a lot of mods for it. And not only is the Archiplasmor an incredible weapon, but it fits her sort of engineer tech style theme. And so it's been a really fun weapon to add to my sort of, you know, the role play of my Protea build, if you will. I'm still working on my secondary and on my melee weapon, but we're making progress here. Her role play potential is already up there for me, and it feels like it could be sky high. Sort of referencing back to what we just talked about with the gameplay experience, Protea looks great. I love her aesthetic. Uh, I love the materials on the Warframe itself. Uh, you know, that those little metal accents do so much for me. And she plays great. She just feels great to play. She's got fantastic animations for everything, including her dash. I love that DE is starting to make custom dodge animations for different frames. You know, Wisp just sort of teleporting and Protea doing this sort of high kick somersault. It looks so, so good. And it also feels more controllable than the sort of traditional dodge roll that you get on older Warframes. Again, like I talked about, her ability effects and audiovisual design is just through the roof. She just is a lot of fun to play, you know, regardless of whether or not I'm doing low level content or higher level content, she's just a joy to play as. And honestly, even when I'm in over my head and I'm not quite performing as well as I should be in higher level content, I'm still just having a good time, you know, just constantly bopping around, doing all the things that I love to do when I play Warframe, all packed nicely into one frame. So that leaves us with the question of what's your favorite Warframe? Think about that for a second, because I'd like to give a huge shout out to all of the wonderful forks who continue to, yeah, wonderful forks, all you wonderful forks out there, all of you wonderful folks who continue to support everything I do here on the channel via my Patreon. If you'd like to become a patron yourself, you can hit the link down in the description below. Uh, Patreon support starts at just a dollar. It gives you access to a ton of good stuff, including early access to ad-free versions of my videos. It also gives you access to our Patreon Discord, where we hang out and talk about all things things, video games, hobby goodness, miniature painting, Warhammer, whatever you might be into, there's somebody there probably chitting and chatting about it. You also get mostly daily updates. I try to do it as frequently as possible. Whenever I have something interesting to say about the projects I'm working on, it goes on the Patreon for you guys exclusively. So you can see me talking about games that I'm playing, uh, doing previews of, stuff that I'm planning on releasing in video form in the future. And there's also updates from my workbench, which includes a lot of my side projects like scale modeling, gun plot, and miniature painting. If that sounds awesome to you, consider checking it out. Now that you've thought about your perfect Warframe, consider sharing it and how you got to that point with it down in the comment section below. What is it that makes that frame so much fun for you to play? Is it the fashion frame, the power potential, the gameplay experience it offers? Is it a combination of those things? And what combination is it? Let me know down in the comment section below, and I would love to have you preface it with how long you've been playing the game for. Uh, I think that depending on you know what sort of player you are, just how deep you are into Warframe, you're gonna have a different perspective. So this isn't really about being like, your perspective matters more because you've got a thousand hours. It's just, it's interesting to me. Cause like as a 300 hour player, I think about the game 
quite a bit differently than someone who has several thousand hours. A lot of, there are a lot of ways in which we're going to think about the game the same or view the game as the same. But again, I think our perspective does change and I find that, that interesting. So if you're comfortable with it, you know, oh, I got 200 hours in the game and my perfect Warframe is so-and-so and here's why. We'd love to hear those stories down in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for watching. Please take care of yourselves. Take care of one another. Be awesome to one another. And I will see you all in the next one.